In this video, we're going to be talking about two files, one of them which takes in an unstructured note file, for example, which includes notes about many different topics and classifies them. And another one attempts to write essay-like long format writings, which tries to respect the word counts which you specify. The first one which categorizes notes, for example, I have this notes.txt file, which has information copied from large language model, Wikipedia article, list of cloud types, auto racing, and Egyptian pyramids, all mixed up in this notes.txt file. And when I ran this main.py file with GPT-4, it had classified it into these files. As you see, ancient architecture classified three paragraphs. Under it, automobile history, three, Cloud classifications classified two of the paragraphs under it. Deep learning techniques have many more emergent abilities and movie review. I think this is really interesting. This was brought to my attention from one of our Discord members. Also, the link will be in the description for the Discord. I think something like this would be useful for many of you who might be keeping notes or want to categorize some copied and pasted information into appropriate file structures. Let's begin by looking at the prompts.py file, which has our prompts in it. This file is a Python class called prompts. Its initialization is passed because we're not using any variables here, and it has three prompts under it as methods. One is the categorized paragraphs, which returns just the messages for the system role. Another one is the categorized paragraphs detailed, and the word count to the expansion prompt for chat completions. This is structured as required by the OpenAI's chat completion messages, the system user and the assistant. Now let's take a look at our main.py file. So we are importing from prompts, which is the prompts.py file, from prompts import prompts. So this first one is the name of the file, and the second one is the name of the class. This one right here, the class prompts. Once we import it, then we can actually use its methods this is a convenient way to keep your prompts separate from your main file so your main file doesn't get cluttered with long prompts. We are importing OpenAI. You do have to have OpenAI pip installed and you do have to define your OpenAI API key. In my case, I have defined it in my user environment variables as OpenAI API key, or you can define it in the code like this. After this point, we are defining some functions, but before I continue, I just want to let you know that I'm going to make this files available for download for my Patreon supporters. The link will be in the description. Also, before we continue, let's actually run a demo of this. So I have deleted all the files that were categorized, which I was showing you. And we do have our notes.txt file, which has all the different information about Egyptian pyramids, large language models, automobiles, and clouds. All we have to do is just run this. And as soon as we start running, GPT-4 will create categories and then create text files related to those categories and then actually we'll start appending to those categories each paragraph if it, as it sees fit now it has created the ancient architecture and historical transportation for example for automobile racing so it will continue until it's done with all our all the paragraphs in the notes that text file and we are done as you see this is all our classifications each paragraph were classified and appended under the, hopefully the correct text file with the classification, with the category. Now that we've seen this in action, let's continue. So we are defining this function, read and print paragraphs. We are defining, which takes it a file path, which we will point to, of course, the notes.txt file. We are defining an empty list, and then we try to open our file path and read the contents. And then we actually create a list with the content that split where the, there's two line breaks, which signifies the paragraphs. As, it, as you see, paragraphs have two line breaks. Then we are actually trying to handle the Unicode errors, encoding errors. If we do get an error, actually, we're going to have a, get a message so just in case. So we are doing try and accept for error handling. And we are returning the paragraphs list with this function. Next, we are defining our file path, which is just notes.txt file, which is in our working directory. Then we are creating our paragraph list by running the function, which we have defined right up here. And we are defining categories originally as an empty list. I'm sorry, as an empty string. 
Then we run a for loop for paragraph in paragraphs, which is a list which contains all the paragraphs from the notes.txt. As you see, we have many paragraphs here. Then we define our messages, which we are going to use to make a call to OpenAI, right? Like this. We are using our prompts class, which we have imported up here. And then that categorize paragraphs method. As you see, we are using this method, which will return this system message using the categories, which is an empty string currently, because if you look at our system prompt, it says analyze the content in user message and categorize it in a general sense, respond with only the category name. But it does say that if the content matches an existing category, use that category so it doesn't keep generating categories. So then we can actually say you can come up with a new category name or use existing categories. And then we say current categories are these dynamic categories, which we are inputting to this method right here. Currently, in the beginning, it's going to be an empty list. But then let's see what happens. Now that we have our system message, we say the user message is going to be the paragraph. And then we define our user message. We have our system message and this messages, and we append the user role as the user message, which is the current paragraph, which we are getting in this for loop. Because we say analyze the content in the user message. So the user message will only include the content, which is each paragraph separately. And then we just print the messages for information purposes. We just make print the separation. Then now that we have our system message and the user message with our content, we make a call to open a chat completions with GPT-4 as messages being the messages we have created here. And we just print the response just so for information purposes. Then we check if the response is not in categories because we have initiated the categories list to be an empty string. This will be true in the first try. Then we actually append it to the categories like this uh, with a space at the end. So once we do this, next time we go through this for loop, our prompt will be populated with our categories so that the GPT-4 can actually take a look at that and decide if it wants to use that category or a new category. And we are actually on the next line, removing any non-alphabetic characters by using this join iron response. Okay. Because we are, if there is any non-alpha, if this is part of this line, if there is any non-alphabetic characters, we just replace it with an empty space so that when we are writing the file names, we don't run into any problems. In our next, with our next line of code, we just create a file for each category and write a response to it. So we say whatever the name of that is returned to us from GPT-4's response is the name of the category. So we create a text file under the categories folder. Okay. And then we write the paragraph on it with append. And then we make a line break and then we make another line break. And then we clear the last user message because we're going to re retrieve a new paragraph so that when we get the next paragraph, this is a fresh new paragraph, which we're going to be sending as the user message. So this is pretty much it. This is how it works. And then once we run this, it looks at each paragraph and it categorizes it. If already a file exists, which relates to that category, it appends it here. For example, in this case, it had appended three separate paragraphs under this category called ancient architecture. Then I just want to mention that I will have both main.py file, word counted expansion and prompts file available for my Patreon supporters as a download for convenience. Link will be in the description. Now let's take a look at this word counted expansion. Let's take a look at its prompt first. But before we continue, I actually have another prompt for categorized paragraphs detailed. As you see, this is exactly the same prompt as this, but this one says analyze the content here keep categories detailed, whereas here we say keep categories simple. If you were to use this prompt by going to the main.py file and just changing the method to categories par paragraphs detailed, and if we delete all the categories and run this one more time, we'll see that the categories will be much more detailed. So we're going to end up with more files in this case. See? It is now dividing it into much more fine, finely meant categories. Almost, yeah. It is still a pending category, so it's not creating a category for every paragraph, but it's definitely being more mindful 
just wanted to mention this to you so that actually you can by simply modifying the prompt you can get completely different results and the beauty is that because we have our prompts all categorized under this class we can actually simply just change the name of the method here and use different prompts without having this main.py file all cluttered i hope this was helpful let's go back to the word counted expansion the prompt for word counted expansion is again under the prompts class which we had talked about this one just says for the system prompt expand on the ideas in the user message so we're going to put in some use ideas in the user message in an essay like format respect the word counts provided for each topic in the user message and then i'm creating a mock user message saying that do you understand the instructions and i'm making the assistant say yes i understand the instructions i will expand on the ideas in the user message Okay, respecting the word counts so you can actually do this our next message is still going to be the user message which we are going to be defining in word counted expansion is the ideas here see i have created the user message here so i want to expand on these ideas and i have actually put in the word counts next to them and then i'm defining the user message as ideas and the message is this i am using the class which i am importing from prompts.py file right import the prompts class like this and then word counted expansion i'm using that method which includes which has our system prompt and the other prompt the general prompt and then i'm appending to it our user which is the user content which is the user message as which is defined i'm sorry which is yeah i'm appending to it the user message which is the ideas which i am defining right here in the word counted expansion .py file then simply we're getting a response using those messages again i recommend using gpt4 for both of those and we are printing the total words counts just to see just to compare and then we print the total words getting the total words count by using the length of the response and then total words and then we print the response now if you run this let's see if it'll respect these word limitations Keep in mind that GPT-4 is a bit slow, so it might take a moment. Okay, we got our response back. Let's see. Actually, the first part of the response was cut off because I was zoomed in too much. Let me run this again. Zoomed out. While we're waiting for the next response, we can see that natural language processing, which is 10 words, actually was very short. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 words in total. So it doesn't respect it 100%, but definitely much better than nothing. Again, bias in AI was short, but AI in education, 50 words, was quite long. And uh, we didn't, we weren't able to see the explainable AI because it got cut off. But the total word count, and this was 253, and we were looking at, we were wanting 180 words. So this doesn't work perfectly, just keep that in mind. But this is definitely a step in the right direction. Maybe you can play around with the prompt, the prompts and try to make it better for yourself and if you do please let us know in the comments or in the discord channel the, the link to the discord will be in the description if you like talking about large language models with like-minded people you like the code around large language models please come join us chat with us here we go see we got explainable ai which is quite long then we got ai in healthcare which is short natural language processing is short Bias in AI is short, and AI in education, which we asked for 50 words, is quite long. Total word count was 251, still more than what we asked for. This is, like I said, this is maybe the step in the right direction. Feel free to play around with it and share your findings. I hope you found this video useful. Please like the video and subscribe if you find the content useful to you. And see you in the next video. Take care.